Well, welcome again to the, the second part of our first week. Uh, we're looking at worldview considerations. And so we want to be able to begin to frame and also answer the question, what is the worldview behind your part particular subject area that you're wanting to study? So I want to offer up some preliminary assumptions that each of us have um, and even our uh, population that we're wanting to study. The first one is that everybody, everyone has a belief system. You do, I do, and those particular belief systems are shaped out of our experience and, and our personal reality. So our environment, our geographical lo location, maybe we're coming from an international location that is not the United States, but maybe it's in Africa or um, Asia uh, country. And so those experiences shape our, our story. And so when we think about these assumptions, put into a perspective of a spider web. Um, the more layers within that particular spider web, the more uh, the assumptions are there, the underlying assumption. You have cultural expressions, you have symbols that make up any given society or organization, and you have power. Um, power makes up within any organization and or leadership um, perspective as well. Uh, there are core beliefs, and those core beliefs are fundamental values that are often non-negotiables within a particular society. So for some of you coming maybe from a pastoral background, you might be interested in studying a denomination uh, as the organization, and just know that within that particular uh, group, there are core beliefs or um, attitudes of piety that reflect who they are. And so you have to get underneath um, those assumptions. You have to figure out, are those assumptions? Are they just mere belief systems? Do they actually become who they are, who they say they are? And so these statements uh, become the overarching direction for that organization or people group. So their fundamental values, their non-negotiable commitments that um, that group uh, or society hold to um, uh, and they believe it, they believe it to be true. Uh, there's core values and those core values are generally accepted statements that have then transferable values between person and or institution. We talk about mission statements as transferable statements, values, commitment, kindness, um, love. Uh, these things are uh, principles that other organizations have adopted as well. And so you'll have to work through those. Um, the difference between core beliefs, core values are going to be um, somewhat different uh, in any organization. There are the control beliefs. Uh, these are the ideas that make up uh, the, uh, the institution or, or the, the people that you're studying. What are they holding to? And they're not willing to compromise on. Uh, these often happen because of experience and, and this is how they determine their their responses to a given um, uh, decision or, or make up uh, the decision-making process. So these are the preliminary assumptions. I wanna continue our thoughts here and work through how the researcher works through these assumptions. Um, you and I have to work in the area of belief systems and just know that that is um, in the back of our mind. So we're studying a religious body. We know ultimately that there are different belief systems that are guiding that people group or population zone. And so we ask the question of why. The, uh, they function in interpreting the experience and also the determination of those responses. So ultimately the researcher is looking through the area of belief system, the realm of belief, and we're testing those hypotheses and we're trying to discern human experience or phenomenology. We're interacting with those experiences and, and those belief systems. So we often um, put those data sets together and we're uh, thinking through the belief system into formulation of questions. And of course, uh, we will work toward those uh, research questions eventually, but this is how we're arriving at our problem statement and then uh, eventually into our research questions as we um, finalize those thoughts. And then there's the gap between data, what the data is saying, and then the beliefs of this particular group that we're, uh, we are working with. 
Now, I, what I would like to do is look at the sources of data for Christian thinking and research. So you're at a Christian college, you're a Christian university, and you're studying organizational leadership. You are researchers. And so there is a, a given expertise that, that we are expecting of you as you go into um, your particular area of study. We would like for you to have a Christian perspective in the realm of leadership, in the realm of organization. So what does God's word have to say about your given area of study? And for some of you coming not from a seminarian background, this will be a challenge for you to articulate. And I'm here to help you work through that process. For those who come from a theological background and maybe have been trained in seminary and graduate school and a master's in biblical studies or an MDiv uh, degree, this is going to be easy. And you're gonna be able to articulate those ideals of, of, of a Christian worldview in relationship to organizational theory and leadership theory as a whole. And so where do we go to find our thinking of, as, as a Christian? Well, number one, it's in the area of general revelation and special revelation. So let me just do a quick overview of what general revelation is. How can I know God from outside of the scripture? Can I come to know God through nature? Um, and so the Bible refers to that as general revelation. I see the works of God in my world. I see the sky, I see the stars, I see the beautiful landscape that has um, that's available for me to visit. And so we may travel, say, to the Grand Canyon and we see God's handiwork, God's display, and we're like, wow. But general revelation needs to be distinguished between special revelation. Special revelation is the gospel, is how we come to personal faith in the Lord Jesus. It's, it's, the, it's the truth that is found in his word. And so that's the distinction here between what is general, what we see in nature, the, the sky, Psalm 19 says, the sky displays, or the, the heavens di displays the handiwork of the Lord. Uh, whereas where we come to personal faith is through the scriptures. We come to know God through and by the Holy Scriptures. And so that becomes a source of, of validating our truth within the Christian world or the Christian worldview. Now, there are cultural aspects or cultural factors in regards to when we conduct research. The first one is that when, when we think about the contribution of culture um, as it plays within worldview, cultural factors are definitely an important observation that you as a researcher need to uh, be thinking about as you go into any given organization, society, cultural group. Remember, um, an organization is a culture. They, they have symbols. They have they have processes by which they move and move people along. They have systems of power. Uh, and so those are going to be important factors as you, as you think about culture. Well, now move outside of any organization and you move into a particular people group, a population that you've chosen. And so within that particular variable, there are gonna be cultural factors that come into play, symbols and symbols of power, symbols of struggle and, and so on. Now, each person, you and I are immersed in culture. We live in a particular area of our, of our country, and uh, we might have a larger city uh, in, the, in our backyard. And so, yes, where we live plays into how we uh, come to understand culture and what we appreciate. It's who we associate with as well. Are we monocultural? Do we only associate with those of the same skin complexion or... Uh, do we see uh, the world uh, broader than our own ethnic background? And so those are some things we'll have to measure as well as we go through um, our research. And then, of course, there's the general intellectual, the moral and cultural climate, the, the zygous concept that often comes into play when we think about research. And those are the cultural, again, the cultural factors as it, as it plays within uh, any body of research as we move uh, forward. Now, lastly, as you think about the zygous of culture, there's the conception of reality and there's ultimately the unconscious values that uh, anyone would hold to as they work through that particular group. 
think about your church. Your church is an organization, it's an institution, it has values, has concepts, has a sense of reality in which it is painting to those who are the stakeholders that come into uh, that particular church. And it has a body of truth of, uh, that they hold to. They hold with, without, at times without apology. They, they believe it to be what it is. And so that's the framework from which uh, they are working through. And so they have a conception of reality that they have enforced and they're wanting those participants to work through. And then of course, in any given church, there might be the unconscious values that maybe aren't publicized, but deeply are cherished by you, the participant, as you work through um, that system uh, and that organizational culture. And then lastly, as we move um, thinking through our action research, we're wanting to move uh, toward that pro um, problem statement that arises up um, as uh, we work through uh, the particular cultures and uh, worldviews that are associated within our field of research. So that makes up um, the remainder uh, mini lecture here for this uh, particular lecture on looking at worldviews as a consideration within our field of study. I hope that helps and clarifies any question that you might have in this particular uh, subject domain.